Hello. Depreciation in Excel can sometimes be something that we need to calculate. And I'm going to show you in this video seven ways, including two completely secret ways as to how you can do depreciation using different methods directly in Excel. My name is David ben I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the White Place, I'm covering on my channel. So let's get started. So over here, I'm going to start with straight line depreciation, and that is the function SLN straight line. I don't know why they chose these names. Often they have the full names, but they chose this. So we have cost, salvage, and life. So here the asset costs me 10,000. I'm going to click on that. And then comma, then my salvage value. This is the amount that I can sell it for after it has depreciated completely. That's 2,000. And then my life is going to be eight years. So I'm going to click on that and close my brackets. And that's going to depreciate by 1,000 every year which kind of makes sense because it needs to go from 10,000 to 2,000. So that's 8,000 and there are eight years. So that makes sense. So if I drag this down all the way until eight, it's going to give me that because I need to lock the cells. So I'm going to click in there and press F4 for each of the three of them. And now I'm going to drag it down. You may think that I didn't do that on purpose and you'd be right. But what happens after that? It would still show me the same numbers because it does depreciate by the same amount every time. But if I were to do the carrying value, which is equals this one minus this one, press enter, I get 9,000, and then I can drag it down. And that goes down to 2,000. Now, if I would go too far, then it would bring me below that. So I'm going to delete these two rows because I don't need them. Perfect, all right. So, Next, we're going to look at the sum of digits. Now, the sum of digits, what it does is it takes all of these, it adds them together. So that would be 36, adding all of these one to eight together. And then it would say in the first year, there are eight years left. So eight out of 36, then, uh, then whatever the remainder is, it would continue doing that. It's uh, less commonly used as a depreciation method, but still one we'll look at. So I'm gonna do equals SYD, and I've got cost salvage, life and then period so like before i'm going to click on this one and press f4 and then i'm going to press a comma to go to salvage this one and then f4 again comma and then life is going to be eight here f4 and then i'm going to do period and period is going to be number one and i'm not going to press f4 because we are going to drag that down so i'm going to close my brackets and i get this value and then if i drag it down it is going to change slightly and it reduces over time and now in this cell, I'm going to do equals this one minus this one. Press enter, and it's going to deduct it. And here we go. Perfect. So the next method, probably the second most common one after straight line, is called declining balance. I have got the French names here as well. We'll look at some special French methods later on. Uh, but here, I'm going to do equals db, declining balance. And here I've got similar, so cost, salvage, life, period. And I've also got month, which is the number of months that you did it in the first year, which usually you would leave blank in this instance. So I'm going to leave it blank. So I'm going to do cost, comma, salvage, comma. I keep forgetting my F4s. This one, F4, comma, and then period again. I'm going to leave month blank. Month is in square brackets, which means it's optional. No F4 there, but I do need an F4 for my B1. And I'm going to close my brackets and I'm going to get this value. And then I'm going to drag it down or we'll double click it. And it was going to show me a different value there. And if I do this one minus this amount, I get my carrying value again, double click like that. And what is interesting about this declining balance method is if you do equals this one, the current year divided by the prior year, it's going to give you a certain number. And if you drag that down, it's going to keep it the same consistent number like this. Unless it would have gotten to below 2000, in which case it would have kind of stopped at 2000. So if, for example, my salvage value was 3000, then yeah, over here it would kind of stop at approximately 3000, like that. All right, so let's go to the next one, double declining balance. And this is called double, but it's actually can be other multiples as well. So this is another accelerated depreciation method equals DDB. 
uh, using the double declining balance method or some other method you specify. So you've got the cost salvage life period, like we've had the last two, but then you've also got factor, which is in square brackets. So cost again is going to be this one, F4 comma this one, F4 comma this one, F4 comma, and then we're going to do period. Note that I don't do anything in the zeroth period. That's just kind of what you do in depreciation. And then factor, the default is two, i.e. double, but you can have other measures. So you can have any number that you want. The most common ones are 1.5, 2.5, or 2. But if I do uh, 1.5, it's going to do the depreciation, not a factor of double, but a factor of one and a half times. So I'm going to do that like this. Press enter, and then it's going to depreciate it more than this one. It is an accelerated method, but yeah. It's not exactly one and a half or double of this. It's a more accurate calculation. I'm not going to go through that in this video, though. And there you go. It does it until 2000. Now, if this was instead of 1.5, this was, say, a blank. Blank would be 2, and that would be more than the other one. There you go. Yeah. And then it would get to 2000, it would stop depreciating like that. VDB, this is variable declining balance. So this one, it has all the same ones as double declining, including the factor that you can amend, but also has uh, whether to do a switch. So what this one does is that it will switch between the straight line or declining balance, depending on uh, which one is greater. So yeah, if, if it becomes that it is greater to do the straight line depreciation, then it will switch to that. Uh, of course, it does depreciate until the salvage value and not be beyond that as per usual. And I'm going to do this one, F4 comma, this one, F4 comma, this one, F4 comma. And then my start period is going to be this one, number one, and my end period is going to be number two. And then factor, like before, we can choose to do this 2 as default, but I can also do 2.5, for example. And then I have the no switch. So switch to straight line depreciation. If it is bigger, that is the default false. But then if I don't want to switch it, I can use true, which kind of makes it pretty much exactly the same as double declining. But yeah, so usually you would just leave that blank and that would go to false. And here we go. So yeah, this one has no period after that. So that would be like that. And there you go. It declines really, really fast compared to even the other ones. Now, if I was to do not 2.5, but leave it blank, blank would be two. And yeah, then it would do something slightly different here. All right. And now let's do two special French methods over here. So, uh, with the, the French accounting rules, you have special adjustments to be done based on the kind of date of purchase. So we have a few extra things, which is the purchase date, the first period end date. It was purchased halfway through the year 2024. So here what I'm going to do is AMOR. And even though I'm using the English version of Excel, it is still here because you might want to still use this. So like before, I have my cost F4. I have my, sal my date purchase now, which is this one. F4, make sure you put in a cell, otherwise you have to use a date function and it gets messy. First period is the end of the first period, always F4. Salvage back here, F4, and then my period is going to be 8, F4. And here you have to have the rates as well. So I'm going to do the 8% rate, which is what I've set up, F4. And then you have optional for basis. This is whether it's a regular 365 day year or 360 day years or other things like that which get a bit messy so i'm going to close my brackets and it's going to depreciate kind of like this so it is slightly different uh, based on the rate that i give it but this is the straight line method so it's going to consistently be 800 and then which is essentially eight percent of ten thousand so if i do equals this one times 0 0.08 that would be 800 and it would kind of do the salvage value after that as well. And now we have this one, which is the equivalent of the declining balance, but with the special French rule adjustments. And what's interesting about this is that if I start typing it, it doesn't show me as an option. 
But if I open my brackets, it does actually give me a function that exists. The only time I've ever seen this other than this is using the data diff function, which is pretty useful. But yeah, interesting. So cost F4 comma date purchased is over here. F4 comma first period end date is over here. Comma salvage is over here. F4 comma. And then I have the period number, which is going to be this one. And then I have the rate, which is going to be this one, F4 as well. No F4 for the period. And basis, we're going to leave it as the default. It's very obscure that you wouldn't use that. And I'm going to drag this down like this. There we go. All right. So these are kind of slightly different methods. That's why they might give you numbers that you don't expect the last few. All right. Well, I hope that's been useful for you. My name is David and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using technical workplace, I'm covering my channel. So check out my other videos if you like this. Thanks for watching.